Hi, Roy Moore here with uh, TSPA, the Scout Patch Auction. And uh, we've got a special opportunity in handling uh, the Bill Lobel uh, lettered shoulder patch collection uh, to focus on one of the sub collections that uh, we've got going up at auction uh, that people might not be familiar with. It is military bases and uh, US uh, abroad housing and uh, sections like that. Uh, it's an area because the last of these were issued in the early 70s in general. Um, is probably beyond or outside of the experience of a lot of collectors and uh, this is a neat opportunity to learn about this fun area of uh, scouting memorabilia and scouting collecting and to share with you some of the um, types and examples that one can look for in this and uh, we'll talk about some different uh, themes you might want to consider collecting in these. So uh, military bases. Uh, had quite often the scouting program was the premier youth program being offered to the youth and also uh, as we'll discover it's not just military bases but uh, foreign embassies uh, US positions abroad and actually that speaks to one of the interesting things about this area of collecting is that it shows the true international reach of the US but more importantly Boy Scouts of America how the Scouts program here in the U.S. Uh, sp truly spanned the globe and the sun never set on the Boy Scouts of America. Um, don't know when the first military uh, identification uh, is uh, shared in some other, uh, in my interview with Blake Kesey, um, community strips first came out in the late 1920s. Uh, then there you came to council strips into the 30s and technically these could be called a community strip but rather than the city of Ann Arbor or Detroit or New York uh, they are the locations of military headquarters, military bases. Um, probably the earliest ones are here in the US but uh, we'll look at some examples that also go into Europe and into uh, Japan and Far East. Um, Clearly, this is an example of Fort Bragg and what we call tan and red. Uh, these were last issued in 1952. Actually, tan and red would predate the khaki and red. That came in in the uh, early war, World War II years, so this is actually pre-early 1940s, 41, 42, probably from the 30s. So Fort Bragg had both a scouting unit uh, and then a community badge, uh, military base strip, uh, identifying them as um, for their location. So um, uh, they clearly go back into the 50s. Um, I have examples here. Uh, this is Alfred Vail and it speaks to a couple things in, in the, both the fun and the challenge in searching for this collectible. It, nowhere on here does it mention that this is a military base. You either have to know the name or do some Googling. Fortunately, that's a lot easier these days to um, identify some of these locations because they may not be evident that this is not a community, but it's an army base. But what's interesting here in the Alfred Vale is, so I showed you a khaki and red. This is a green and brown or explorer colors. And, and again, it shows how extensive uh, Bill's collection is. Uh, here it is also in cub colors, blue and yellow strip. All of these are pre-1952. Um, I think there's also is Alfred Vail in red and white. Um, uh, so the, that it, it spanned a number of years. Um, I got the example on uh, Fort Bragg, but I'm also going to show um, in the khaki and reds, and it could happen in some of the other odd colors, there is such a thing as, this is a Fort Davis, um, you'll see a sometimes described gauze backing, where the patches are stitched with um, a piece of gauze, usually versus a plain back khaki and red from the Alfred Vale, where um, uh, we tend to find these is would usually very hard to find patches because they must have been very limited run stitched up on a single loom machine or single embroidery machine that's probably making an order as few as six maybe as few as three patches for the leadership or uh, uh, officers or uh, uh, of the troop or the post. Um, 
So there, that's one of the things we'll talk about is uh, gauze back. Um, one of the things in the military bases, you'll sometimes find different spellings. So Fort Bragg, F-O-R-T, and Fort Bragg, F-T. Uh, that also happens in the uh, Air Force bases where you'll get, uh, let's see here, well here, we'll take one. This is actually a gorgeous one from uh, Far East. Uh, and I'm probably abusing the pronunciation Itatsuki and then Itatsuki Air Force Base, AFB. Um, into the Air Force side of life, um, there is something that will surface. Here's one that says Hickam Field. The Air Force was originally the Army Air Corps. Well, actually it was the Air Corps. Then it was known as the Army Air Corps in 1941. In 1947, it became its own branch of service. So a lot of what were Air Force, we now think of Air Force bases, and so here's the Hickam AFB Air Force Base. They were, the locations were known as fields. So you'll, if you look at the history for Hickam, and it's out of Hawaii, it was Hickam Field in its original name. Now because this is red and white, we know that that's fifth, post-1952. Um, and would have probably, it, certainly the only designations of field predate the use of AFB. Um, I don't know if I put out, well, well, we do have some examples of air stations. Um, one thing that will come up in this collectible, and it's kind of rare, there aren't many examples, I've got a couple. There are full-size strips, what we think of as full-size red and whites. Uh, I'm not aware of any full-size pre-red and white era, but it comes as Columbus AF base as a half strip is our terminology and then this one also has Columbus AFB Mississippi as a full strip. I've got another example and again there really aren't too many um, Francis Warren uh, out of Wyoming and then it also exists in a couple different ways but here's one of them is F.E. Warren Air AFB Air Force Base. I'd, I'd have to look out, um, certainly the Army is a much larger uh, military branch than the Air Force, but I believe there are more Air Force uh, base, uh, bases in part because they're much smaller operations and they're deployed uh, around the world for response times or um, uh, as early uh, warning and defense. Uh, so I think there are more uh, Air Force bases. Um, there are uh, some that are, so Army and Air Force are the two dominant branches, but there will also be, like this is a Chincoteague Naval Air Station, so it is actually a Navy Air Service. Um, there's other examples that are for Marine Corps Bank. Uh, this is not a Boy Scout camp, Camp Lejeune, it's a mar Marine training base, and there's other camps. Uh, now that I think about it on the example of forts. Uh, just because it has Fort in the name doesn't mean it's a military base. Uh, there's Fort Wayne and Fort uh, Indiana and Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, but there's also some Fort uh, designations that are technically community strips, but they are historical Fort Fort uh, Sumner. Um, there's uh, one I just entered uh, over in Oregon um, that are historical locations, uh, typically going back to the Revolutionary Wars, uh, that it must have had military or uh, Boy Scout units tied to them, and uh, one could add those into the collection. Um, inside the Air Force bases, uh, some interesting or different types of examples and something to pay attention to. I've got them pulling out here uh, from our photographing. So Andrews AF base and Andrews AF base. The difference is ones with periods, yeah, let's see if we can get these on the camera, and one is without. So you've got A, Andrews AF base, and then Andrews A period, F period base. 
those examples exist uh, not in all of them but do come up from time to time on some of the bases and so one needs to look at it uh, and again we're still discovering um, strips that uh, we didn't know I remember uh, with Art Hyman years ago having a strip called Lake and Heath. I said, well, Art, where's this from? And he didn't have it as his book. Uh, I've got a copy of Art and Rob Cutts' book here. Uh, for those who are in nostalgia, this is fourth edition, which is circa 1996 um, and was the gold standard for collecting red, what we call red and white council strips, so there were other colors, but those of us who in our youth wore these strips um, knew them as red and whites because those of us, those who knew them as uh, pre-red and white colors, are very few of those uh, gentlemen are living right now. Uh, long and short of it, um, Lake and Heath, he knew, oh, that, well, that's an Air Force base in England, um, but he'd never seen a strip of it. And I don't know how it did come through my hands, but it did. And frankly, got me started in collecting Air Force base strips, and it's been a fun thing to pursue since. Um, some other examples so, uh, that I wanted to go to. This one is an interesting combination, Argentia. It's a base we have in Canada, but you can also find it with Ar Argentia NFLD, Newfoundland where it's located and so they actually put the country or in this you know, I guess the province into the strip name and there are some other examples where that happens um, this so we've got Ramey Air Force Base in Puerto Rico uh, the full strip again is an example here very hard to find very uh, limited availability but it also comes two other ways base Ramey or Ramey Base that would be the English, Besa Ramey, for the Hispanic Scouts. So it, it is how they would uh, name the base there in Puerto Rico. Uh, I think that's the only known example where Ramey Air Force Base is, is reversed for um, uh, Hispanic speaking. Uh, another example here that uh, typically collectors who pursue these uh, look for and these are this is in many of these are in the canal zone but they're in other parts of the world too that are names of cities that were not, not the name of a base but were foreign housing either tied to a military base or tied to a foreign service embassy so in Panama or uh, um, canal zone at the time uh, council uh, one can locate a series of, and we, we categorize these as U.S. abroad rather than necessarily military bases, but quite often those who pursue uh, this type of con uh, collecting will, will pursue uh, these foreign uh, housing units. Um, uh, in the non-military side, uh, Buenos Aires, uh, Madrid, uh, a lot of places in uh, Kabul, uh, Afghanistan, uh, places literally where the U.S. had presence, even if it wasn't a military base, we may have had a scout unit and had community strips for those locations. Um, other examples we're going to go into here. This doesn't happen often, but there are Air Scout colored strips. Again, these are pre-1952, blue and blue. Um, uh, for air bases that, uh, so West Point is obviously a, the air academy there, um, but must have had a, an Air Scout squadron tied to it and thus had an Air Scout strip. Uh, that's the first example that I've ever seen. There's some, also f in this collecting some fascinating uh, combinations. This is Army Chemical Center, incredibly rare, incredibly obscure. Um, don't know. I'm not sure we know the location of where this is. So if somebody watching this video can help us identify where the Army Chemical Center was located, uh, that would be helpful. Um, but there are some that will tie to uh, ordnance and provisioning uh, uh, supply areas for the military services that people who are military uh, strip collectors will pursue. Um, this one, 
it's from France, it's the US made, but Fontainebleau, it's where we had a NATO's headquarters location, obviously had uh, a scout troop there and the unit, uh, whether the, the, just the leaders or just, or the youth as well, had th this for their uniform shirt. Um, again, so that's it's some of the, what makes this a fascinating uh, area to collect. One thing that has happened, uh, and it could be that be, uh, their active bases, um, they, and that is what I was going to say, private issues or reissues or modern. And I don't know why this says Fort Bragg CZ, but this is actually modern embroidery, um, maybe sometimes more easily told by the back. Here's one as a Fort Bragg, North Carolina that one can see. Again, it's what we call modern embroidery. Um, don't know that, you know, could it, that they were most likely were issued by the uh, unit there and wanting to have local identification that remembers their history. Um, this one is out of, uh, I believe, Japan and incredibly close to American style red and white, but the dimensions are off and the embroidery is slightly not quite what was done by the embroidery companies that made our traditional red and whites. Uh, but it's not a real modern piece because I can tell by the style of the embroidery. Um, got here Clark Air Base, uh, Philippine Islands, a major uh, installation for us. They have what we, because of the embroideries available there in the Philippines, Taiwan as well, uh, Far East Council is where they most often occur, we call made in theater. It's embroidery that's made locally to the countries over in that part of the world. Uh, the Clark Air Base, and these are hard, but do turn up. So that was the red and white, but also the cub colors, blue and yellow. And again, these are, I, I'm almost positive, are for American scouts. Uh, even though Philippines has a very active scouting program. And then uh, a blue and blue color, and again, a gauze back to that. So there is a, a designation that one will see in this collecting area called um, Maiden Theater, MIT. Uh, what other examples did I want to go through? I talked about camps, all those bases, command center. Um, reference material. If you're a member of ISCA, International Scout Collectors Organization, I'll put it at scouttrader.org uh, as the website. One can get the, for free, it's a benefit of membership and download the PDF of the collecting book for CSPs, Council Shoulder Insignia, CSI, that has a whole series of chapters on lettered shoulder patches, which is the red, all the red and whites and the other colors with um, information on uh, the listing of all of the uh, military bases, uh, and even so, I, as I've been working with Bill's collection, we're finding pieces that are not even listed in here, um, as well as ratings and uh, uh, estimates, market values. So that's with scouttrader.org. I'll put it in the comments. That's uh, one of the reference books. As I said, there's the earlier one by Ra uh, Rob Cuts and Art Hyman. Uh, Art's since passed away. Rob's still out there and active. Um, but that's a collecting guide. Collecting the world is tough. Collecting these issues is tough. Um, trying to collect uh, all branches of service is really the mountaintop. Uh, it's a Himalayan type of thing. Uh, Bill has, uh, I believe, the most extensive collection that is out there. And as these pieces get uh, uh, dispersed, and many of these are one known, two known examples, so uh, bringing them together will be incredibly hard again. But one uh, way you might think of collecting these are for your state. Get uh, the bases. Uh, Michigan, we have uh, several Air Force bases. There was a Fort Custer, and I, but I've never seen a, uh, uh, a strip for Fort Custer, but uh, there's Sawyer and Selfridge and uh, a couple different varieties of those for Air Force bases that uh, we had, obviously scouting units tied to those bases and strips that exist for them. So a um, fun area to collect is maybe to start with your state. Uh, certain parts of the country are gonna have a lot more depth to that than other parts, but uh, the military presence is deep and broad. Um, 
collecting Europe is incredibly fun and interesting. And it, overall, it just it speaks to the depth and breadth of scouting and uh, the leadership opportunities, the, the development opportunities that scouting provides. The military services have, have uh, recognized it as a premier youth program for them. Um, that's Roy Moore. It's, it's a quick run through of, of a fascinating collecting area in our hobby. Um, thanks for uh, enjoying this. Uh, let me know of any questions you have. Uh, put them in the comments and we'll uh, try to get them answered. Have a great day, folks.